I honestly have no idea what's going on here and I love it. <laughs> Good afternoon, lovely people of YouTube. Welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to another chocolate review. If you are new here, my name is Kelly and on this channel we bake things, we eat things and we talk about baking and eating things. But you might like that. <laughs> yes, today we are eating and talking about chocolate. And today's video includes a brand that is brand new not only to the channel but also to my mouth. <laughs> not only that, but today's review video involves one of the most fun sounding brand names I have encountered thus far in my life. <laughs> we are talking about Fjok. Now Fjok Sjokolade are a Norwegian chocolate company. These guys are making bean to bar chocolate, meaning they are in charge of the whole process. It means that everything is fair trade, everything is ethical, everything is good and will likely taste better than almost all mass marketed chocolate. Can you tell how excited I am? <laughs> so as I said, Fjok are based in Norway and they have a whole range of flavors and bars and chocolate products you can buy. I have never tasted their chocolate before. The only Norwegian chocolate brand I think I've ever tasted is now, do forgive me, I believe they're called Freya, but I may be making that horrendously German and not Norwegian at all. My deepest apologies. <laughs> Regardless, I am incredibly excited to be tasting this chocolate from my Nordic neighbours. Let's get into it. So we're going to be tasting two different bars from Fjok today. The first is a 70% reindeer moss and lingonberry bar, and the other is going to be a milk chocolate with Brunost, which is actual cheese. I'm so, so excited. Let's do it. <laughs> so I think we're going to begin today's review with the 45% milk Brunost bar. Brunost is a caramelized cheese. Now this is incredibly hard to describe if it's something you haven't seen or tasted before. I can put some images up on screen. Brunost comes in kind of a big golden brown cube, usually. It seems to be quite widely available in Norway. I have only been to Norway once, but I had to taste it when I was there and I loved it. The only way I can kind of describe its flavor and texture is somewhere between toffee and Swiss cheese. It's bizarre, but if you ever get the chance to taste it, do it because it is so unique and so delicious. Hence why I couldn't resist, but pick it up in the form of a chocolate bar. So because this bar is a milk chocolate, it contains just cocoa beans, sugar, cocoa butter, milk powder, brown goat cheese, and sea salt. Let's get into it. I must compliment Fjak on their packaging as well. It has this gorgeous kind of Scandi minimalism that's very appealing. So when we open this up, not only do we have beautiful kind of almost book-like card packaging and patterns, but we have a little bit more information on Fiac, their products and their processes, which is just love it. There is certainly an undeniable caramel smell coming from this bar. You can smell that kind of milky cocoa, but you know there's some kind of toasty toffee vibes going on in there. Good snap, which we love. Let's taste the Fjak Brunost chocolate and see how it is. Oh, that is wonderful. If you love salted caramel, pause this video, go and buy this bar and then come back and we can chat. <laughs> that is one of the richest little mouthfuls of flavor I think I have ever had. As soon as you put it in your mouth, the first flavor you get is this kind of smoky saltiness, followed by that extra kind of smoky caramel flavor. You know, nothing artificial and flavoring-like, just something you can tell has properly had kind of toasted sugar in there. While I wouldn't say that you would immediately know there was cheese in here, it definitely evokes the flavor of that Brunost cheese, from when I've tasted it at least, which is this gorgeous, rich, smooth, buttery caramel flavor. And on top of that chocolate, mm, not only do you have that kind of lovely, smooth, super creamy milk chocolate, but you get this little kiss of texture from what I'm guessing are those crunchy little sea salt flakes unless they're kind of dry little bits of that Brunos cheese in there. But it's this lovely kind of gentle, almost biscuity crunch in amongst that chocolate. Just... <sighs> Genuinely, 
gorgeous. I didn't really expect anything less. When I saw the flavor, when I saw the packaging, I knew we were in for some exciting stuff here. But what we have is a well-tempered, great textured bar that is just punching with flavor. For being a completely unique flavor and for being exactly as it says it is going to be, that's a five out of five for me, without hesitation. Let us delve into our second product today, which honestly, if you thought toasted goat's cheese wasn't a crazy enough chocolate inclusion, prepare to have your socks entirely blown off you. Because we are now talking about a 70% dark chocolate with reindeer moss and lingonberry. Now, these are two ingredients. I barely even know what they are, let alone what they taste like. Lingonberry is something I have only ever seen in the form of jam to accompany Swedish meatballs or in a jar in Ikea. I will be completely honest. I think that is the only time I have ever heard of this. Similarly, um, as I'm sure you can imagine, reindeer moss isn't something we come across regularly in Scotland, but having looked it up, I believe it is obviously some kind of plant, but that it is used in thickening soups and stews, and it can even have this kind of mushroom taste to it. So I honestly have no idea what's going on here, and I love it. <laughs> so let's get into this bar and see what we've got. It includes cocoa beans, sugar, cocoa butter, lingonberry, and reindeer moss. That's it. No added vegetable fats, no added sweeteners and flavors other than just the basic natural ingredients. Again, we open up to this utterly gorgeous packaging and we have a very dressed up looking bar. So while on one side, you will see that this is just exactly the same as the other bar was with its sort of elongated rectangular chocolate chunks, on the back of the bar, it looks like we have speckles of what appears to be those dried lingonberries and that reindeer moss. Let me just, let me just, oh, bellissima. So looking at this bar, it looks as though these lingonberries are almost going to be like dried cranberries, something I have a lot of time for, but this reindeer moss is truly new to me. The smell initially is honestly just quite a fruity dark chocolate. So let's see how it tastes. This is wonderfully bizarre. <laughs> if you are a lover of fruity chocolate, whether that's, you know, the simplicity of a Cadbury fruit and nut bar or a dark chocolate bar that has complex fruity notes, this is one for you. I'm not even sure exactly what I'm tasting. <laughs> The dark chocolate itself is a seriously bold, fruity kind. Typically, I am not the biggest fan of fruity chocolate. I much prefer a kind of big, ballsy, nutty dark chocolate, but this is intriguing. The lingonberries in there have the same kind of texture as a dried cranberry or a raisin, as you would probably expect, though I would probably put the flavor more towards the cranberry side. It's not super sweet. It has that kind of mellow sugariness that's also overpowered by a real kind of tartness, a kind of sourness. And when it blends in, in your mouth with that dark chocolate, it's very kind of red winey, but I don't really know why. <laughs> As for the reindeer moss, it might be that I don't really know what I'm searching for when I taste it because I've never tasted this ingredient before, but there seems to just be this kind of little, a little kiss of earthiness in amongst everything. I don't even really know what I mean by that. I don't know if I mean mushroomy. I don't know if I mean beetrooty. I don't know if I just mean a different kind of chocolate flavor. I have no idea. It's certainly not immediately detectable. It's not like the first time you would taste licorice or black coffee or chili. Anything that would be wildly memorable and potentially unpleasant. It's a really subtle flavor, if anything. And I'm not entirely sure what it brings to the bar because I don't know what it is. <laughs> so perhaps I'm not qualified to be discussing the merits of moss. But that being said, this is a hugely enjoyable bar. The chocolate has a wonderfully smooth texture. You heard that great snap, so you know it's been tempered well and taken care of. The ingredients are nicely dispersed, so each little chunk will get a whisper of each. And it's just a nice, smooth, non-bitter dark chocolate, if that's your thing. Overall, I would probably say I didn't personally enjoy it as much as the Brunost, which was just exceptional, but this is still a very good bar and definitely one to try if you were into funky new ingredients. So I'm going to give this one a four out of five.
If you guys have ever tasted Norwegian chocolate, if you are an Aberdonian like me who has connections to Norway simply through the city you live in, do let me know. I'd like to know of your experience with Norwegian sweets and things like that. Or if you are from Norway, hello. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed today's video, do not forget to give it a juicy thumbs up if you have the time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new here because it would be wonderful to see you again. In the meantime, that is all I have time for today. I'm going to go and mull over my thoughts on these mystery bars a bit more over a cup of tea and I will see you for the next one.